Okay, today we have an 820-3332 with the usual random crashing issue that has been badly screwed up by someone that did not know what they're doing. So let's take a look and let's uh, figure out what they did and uh, talk about what we can do to make this work again. Okay, now whatever I do, I do not want to put any more power into this board before we figure out what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to check is to see if I have a short between PPBest G3 Hot and GPU V Core. So here's our meter. You can see this, actually, I'll put it right here. So we're going to first measure if we have a short on PPBus. So in diode mode. And it actually looks like we do have a short, which is actually funny because we did not have a short a minute ago. Check one more time. And looks like we do have a dead short to ground on PP bus. So the next thing I'm going to check is if I have continuity between PP bus and VCore. So we're going to measure this in a couple places. And it does not look like we have a short to VCore, which is very good. So we don't have, or do we? No. We don't have any connection between PP bus G3 hot and VCore, which means the graphics chip probably survived. Probably. We don't know what happened to it and let's take a look at the uh, actual circuit in question with our microscope so this is the usual U8900 area we see a lot of flux and what is this what did you do it is all bridged there's a bridge there there's a bridge there this capacitor is knocked off there's a bridge here who knows whatever that is this is a, quite a disaster so the main areas are going to be right in this area the yeah, look at this it's all just please okay please if you do not know what you're doing if you do if you are going to mess something up like this on a customer's device please step away from the soldering iron there's no wonder why why we have a short here i mean there's a difference between learning and doing this to a customer's device. I mean, this is just a mess. It's one thing to do this to a customer's device, and there's another thing to do this and then give it back to them. Um, not working, and this is a nightmare. So don't do this, please. If you're going to do this, it, do it on your own stuff until you get better at it. Or if you are going to do this, at least know how to fix it when you're done. So we can't trust this chip. There's no way I'm going to trust this, not with it being bridged. If this chip is bad. If I repair everything and this chip is bad, it's going to kill my GPU MOSFETs most likely very violently, and then the um, GPU is most likely going to wind up dead because it's going to send 12 volts to it. So I am going to take off anything that looks messed with, which includes U8900 um, and most of what's around it. So let's get started. I'm going to kick on my fume extractor and I'm going to start. Alright, so I'm just going to remove everything that's been messed with so another thing to take in consideration here is we don't know if those capacitors were replaced we don't know if they're in the right place so it's best just to get rid of it all I do not like using hot air in this area of the board it can sometimes permanently damage it to where it will not work um, but in this case it's really unavoidable you can see how long it's taking because the heat sinks on the GPU um, just try and minimum um, if you do have to use hot air in this area try and keep it to a minimum but in cases like this it's just not going to be avoidable unfortunately need my finer tip tweezers the reason why I say that is this board obviously has flexion issues that's why we get the U8900 issue in the first place. So the whole area of the board is kind of structurally compromised, and this is what will happen. Well, if you use too much heat in this area repeatedly, you can risk breaking traces in the board to the GPU, and then the board won't work permanently. So that looks good for here. but some stuff I mean you, you can't avoid it like this there's no way I can get around using hot air just not gonna happen okay let's wick away all the excess solder 
find the wick first. We're going to put nice fresh stuff down. Clean this all up. It's also not good to leave burnt flux on the board. It doesn't work as well as new flux. So if you, whenever you're replacing solder on pads like this, it's always best to clean all the old stuff up. And you can see the area looks obviously much better now. And we'll put a little bit of the new stuff down. I know I'll get questions in the comments every time, even though I've said this a million times. This is Amtec NC560, which kind of isn't available to purchase right now, unless you go through Amtec. I did have it in stock before, but I stopped selling it. Um, hopefully soon I'll have it in stock again for purchase on the website. I may or may not. I don't know yet. Or I may decide to just hoard it all for myself. Depends. So this is a ground pin. This pin, pin is always a pain right here. This is a thermal pad. So everything is good here. Let's go ahead and put some more flux down for those components right here, or these components right here. We have quite a few here. So let's see. This is the donor board. We have some caps some resistors, so I'm just going to start at the furthest end and work my way up. So the first one is a cap. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of oxidation on the donor board. That's no big deal. The component is still perfectly fine with a little bit of oxidation on it. It's not like it's corroding away, and most of that's going to go away with the flux. We can use our iron um, to take away some of that as well, and this flux is actually very good at cleaning oxidation off of components compared to 559 or any other flux I've used. I'm going to put together a guide, I think, of the different fluxes. place there we go like 559 has its advantages of course and 560 does too one of the things with 560 that I don't like it's kind of high ash so you know when you see that black stuff when you're soldering um, that's all ash or soot and that is a byproduct of the flux now Some fluxes are better for that. 559 is one that is has low, lower ash, but 560 has higher ash. Um, but it also stays on the board longer when you're using an iron. And it always is going to run away with me because I'm using the highest airflow.
Now for our chip, which is U8900. It's okay, we didn't flow those components into place all the way. Um, perfectly fine, because when the heat that is required to put this chip on, it will uh, straighten them out. You'll see what I mean. Whoa, where did that go? Here it is. I need to double check orientation on this real quick, so I'm going to look at the recording. Always good to have a recording in place for st when stuff like that happens. Because if you put this on the wrong way, it is game over. I kind of want this to go into place by itself. Here's it's going to be a little bit stubborn. Right. Flow into place. There we go. That's what I wanted. Now hopefully this board will work after having hot air in this area. It should. It's kind of rare that they do die from hot air being there, but it does happen. So it's one of those things that, you know, we'll see. Gonna make sure there's a good amount of leaded solder in here. There's some lead free mixed in from the chip and I don't really want that because um, it is more brittle than leaded and this is not a chip that you want brittle solder on. I want that nice shiny clean leaded solder. like that. Considering doing only pre-recorded stuff, um, from now on I'm in the middle of it because the live streams are getting annoying when there's just people constantly telling me uh, what's wrong with the board and insisting and arguing it and it's just starting to get not fun. So I may decide to just do pre-recorded now. What people tend to forget sometimes is I have the board in front of me and they're a thousand miles away sometimes. That should be good. That doesn't look too bad. So now what we're going to do is first see if this turns on. Let's see actually if our PP bus short is gone. I think it will be. I think that mess caused the short. Um, so let's check again. Turn our meter on. Back to continuity mode. Check for short on PP bus. And our short is gone. We have, I'll show you guys here. So here's our meter. I'm gonna move it. Actually, can you guys see it up here? That's it, yeah, perfect. That's actually even better. This is the new FLIR meter that I really like. So this, I've already showed people, but this has built-in thermal as well. And um, it's just an absolutely incredible meter. It's a little bit expensive. They're around 500, um, but it is a just great tool. So you see we have no short there. Um, or do we? We do have a short. That is a zero ohm, wait. Yeah, that's a zero ohm short, let's see. Yep, 0, 0.0 ohms to ground on PP bus G3 hot. So that's not good. Let's check again for a short between PP bus and our FETs. 
open line. 500 kilo ohms, 1 kilo ohm. So we don't have a short between PP bus and our FETs. So we're good there. So on this board, what's going to cause the PP bus short? Most commonly, like I said, is going to be CPU FETs. Let's check CPU now. Um, milli ohms, milli ohms, milli ohms, milli ohms, milli ohms. So nothing there. All right. So most commonly, when we get a short on PP bus on this board, it's either going to be from the creation MOSFETs, which are right here. Let's switch off to. So when we get a PP bus short on this board, usually. Um, we're either going to have an issue with, with these MOSFETs here. Um, sometimes we'll get a tantalum cap that's going to fail. That's why I want to kind of look and see if I see any evidence of that, but I don't. Not around here. Um, sometimes just something random, but most commonly is either going to be a bad cap, um, the MOSFETs, or an issue around our CPU that causes the FET to short to um, V core. So. We have to inject voltage now, or what I can do is plug it into the charger and see uh, see if anything gets hot just off of the charger voltage, which is entirely possible. If it's a, uh, I just got flux on my hand. I hate getting flux on my hand. So what I'm going to do is plug it into the charger now and um, see if anything lights up on FLIR, which is wonderful because on this camera um, the sensor is so sensitive that you can see stuff when my, my old one w wouldn't be sensitive enough to see uh, see issues on the board if you go in close on the board you can easily see the components with the other one was just a big blob of stuff so I'm gonna plug it in I'm gonna watch and see if I get a blip of heat from anything And I got trolled because that fan is spinning. Okay, moment of truth. Plug it in the battery. See if it has any charge in it. Probably not. It does. Plug in the... And we get chime and backlight. So just to confirm, I'm going to boot into Apple Service Diagnostic, OS version. We're going to run a quick test on the graphics chip. Um, if we'll go into the boot menu here. I think I'm hitting the right button. And I did plug in the keyboard, so we should be good. I'm going to plug in the charger. Sometimes it'll take a while to go into the boot menu, especially on an SSD that's been ran over by a chair several times. That's how things are. Also, sometimes if they don't, don't go in right away. There it goes. So let's go over here to 3S155, which should be the right one for this machine. They'll take a minute to go in there, so in the meantime, we're going to wait. Okay, fully booted into Apple Service Diagnostic. See, we have image on the screen. Everything works. We're going to deselect all these tests. And I'm just going to run video controller external. And let's see. We don't want to do all these. It's going to take a while. So I'm just going to do... Let's just do one or two. Um, just to confirm that... The GPU is not going to completely die once it um, goes under load. So here we go. It's running the GPU tests right now. Passed. So in addition to this, what, what of course I'm going to do after is run, um, you can see it's fine. Um, but I, this test is not really that intensive as far as GPU loads. So after this is done, this is going to go in the ultrasonic. I'm going to run full Apple service diagnostic and then it's also going to be run for 
around an hour to uh, hour or two on Unigen Valley at um, max settings, and that's going to put the GPU under a lot more stress than this test will, and that'll make sure that everything's fine. Um, but everything's fine with this, so this is fixed, and that's it for today. So thank you for watching, and I hope this video um, helps you solve your problem. And if um, if you do this to a U8900, stop. Shame on you. Please learn how to do it properly, and then you will have a much better success rate.